guys, John without the H here. Taking my free wing 90 millimeter F22 back up to demonstrate some maneuvers. Show you guys how some of this stuff is done. If you'd like to see how it's done, this might help you out. Here's hoping anyway. I'm going to go ahead and shove my 6000 Z pack as far back as it can possibly sit to get that center of gravity close to 170 millimeters or slightly beyond. This will make the plane inherently unstable, which is what I'm looking for with this fighter jet. It's very, very nose heavy in its stock configuration with the FMS 1950 KV fan, the Avian 130 amp ESC upgrade, and the separate BEC just to run the retracts so that they don't burn them up because the Avian can only kick out six volts. This plane is a formidable aerobatic monster and I really love it. Let's do a quick control check. Up, down, right, left. Got deflected ailerons set up for the takeoff to help shorten the takeoff roll. I'm gonna turn on my chest cam so you can see, you guys can see what I'm doing. Help demonstrate some of these maneuvers. I'll try to keep my hands still as much as I can. If you guys have watched my chest cam in the past, you know that I tend to move my hands around a little bit when I start getting a little anxious. I do like to tell myself that it's only foam and I am gonna eventually replace this model anyway because I'm gonna get replacement parts to set it up as a Mobius 1 F-22 in the scheme from Ace Combat 4. So I can't wait to give it a fly and see how it handles. All right, here we go. Oh wait, I don't think I turned on my chest cam. I did not. Okay, that always helps to do that first. <laughs> Alrighty, go ahead and point the plane away from the grass. Turn the chest cam on. And away we go. Half throttle takeoff. It is springtime here in North Carolina, which is really, really nice. It's feeling great out here. First day I've worn t-shirt or a t-shirt and shorts by itself or by themselves in a while. Straight up. Pull back over with a little bit of throttle. Twist out of it. And then go forward. It's a very capable model. I, I apologize in advance for the lack of clouds. It's not very humid today, so there's not a whole lot of, uh, lot of clouds at all in the sky. So I'll do what I can. Start with the Cobra. But we're gonna get a little higher before we do that, just in case something goes wrong. I don't want it to go into those trees, whatever happens. Okay. Pull back. As it snaps forward, you go ahead and just give it full throttle. I don't know if you guys could tell, but it basically dropped no altitude whatsoever. And it maintained its energy in the form of its airspeed and just went straight through and just continued going. It's pretty cool. It's one of the few airframes I've met or flown that can competently do the Cobra maneuver. The F-15 uh, with the new servo upgrades can do it too, which is really cool. Okay. It's got an impressive roll rate. I love it. Let's bring it up, show you guys how a flat spin's done. But to do that, we need to gain some altitude. So we're gonna maintain some of our throttle here. Okay, pull up into a Cobra, and as we stall, just hold back and left. Saw the trees come in, I should have gotten a little higher. That's okay. I say that's okay a lot, I've noticed when I go back to rewatch my content. <laughs> that's acceptable, I suppose. Now that the air's a little warmer, I can run these batteries down a bit more. Uh, I've been bringing them home and realizing that I've got a full almost half volt left to work with a lot of the times, which is a lot of power when you're talking about EDFs. Okay, let's bring her up. Gain some altitude slowly but surely. So we don't run down the power system too much. 
do want to retain some power for landing here. Still plenty of power to work with. That's under load with half throttle. Going straight into an inverted flat spin. There you go. Popped it right out of it. Check the load one more time. Still plenty of power to work with. After another 30 seconds or so, we're gonna start planning for landing. See if I can get a J-turn pulled off. There's your J-turn. So you saw me pull all the way back to the right. The plane flipped to the left is the best way to describe what it did. Keeping our full span flaps out. I don't know if the gear actually came out. We're about to find out. Okay, just took him a moment. There we go. Go ahead and bring her in. We'll bring her back up in a little bit. Spoilers. Definitely like the way it flies at 170 millimeters back. It is much more aerodynamically unstable, but it lands much slower. FCS normal. And in general, it's just more fun to fly. Let's check our voltage. 23 volts. 23 volts, about where I need it to be, which is just about storage voltage, maybe slightly less. I'd rather be less than storage voltage rather than higher than it, because it means I have to take it home and discharge to get it to the correct voltage for storage level. Okay, let's bring her back over. Need to trim out that nose wheel. It's got a tendency to want to turn on the ground. It'd be an easy fix. All right, guys, coming right back with the uh, F-22, 90 millimeter from Freewing. If you didn't hear me say it earlier, this is not a stock unit. I have D85 MG servos in the horizontal, let me rephrase, the all-moving stabilators. And I'm flying with the FMS 1950 KV motor and Spectrum 130 amp ESC that comes stock with the E-Flight Viper 90 millimeter. I can't recommend that jet enough. It is seriously one of the best flying jets out there, including in high alpha, which I was inspired to do because people told me you can't do that with a Viper. <laughs> well, I don't hear anybody tell me that anymore after I've shown off what it can actually do. All right, on this F-22, we're gonna take it up now that we've shown off Cobras, flat spins of both types, inverted and regular. We are going to demonstrate how to do alpha passes, which include upright and inverted. And then any other fun stuff I can fit in there while I have time to do so before the sun goes down here. Taking off with full span flaps. Okay, there we go. Get that camera situated. Get my chest cam going. Uh, that's already been going. All right, cool. Just gotta edit it and... Actually, we'll just cut it here and then I'll edit it uh, back in later. Just make it easier to do. There we go. Fix my sock real quick because I can feel something stabbing me in it. Get away from that big bump. Gotta come back out here and clean this taxiway up a little bit. Half throttle takeoff. Flaps gear up. And do a full throttle takeoff as we climb and bank. Remember guys, as your bank angle increases and your um, the amount of elevator you pull increases while you're in that bank angle, a your amount of airspeed also needs to increase, otherwise you will exceed critical angle of attack very quickly. Okay, let's dump the flaps as the wings level out so we don't induce a stall too easily. Starts to slide in real quick. Flaps up. Of course I did that incorrectly, I didn't do it far enough out. So what we're gonna do is try again. So much for the alpha pass, right? More like a setup pass. Okay. Full flaps. Flaps coming out. Should be able to slow it down nice and gentle by this point. Flaps up. Alpha pass. Pretty easy for this jet. One minute. Where it starts to get interesting is when you do the high alpha pass. That wasn't exactly the super high alpha pass, but I'm talking about invert it. Uh, I could have been even more nose high. It would have been more interesting. Let's do it again. There we go. Level out those wings, because I'm going to pull that elevator and they're going to immediately snap into a stall. Flaps up. There we go. Slowing down. There's your actual alpha pass this time around. 
little bit of wing rock that I've induced myself just to say hi. Let's flip her around. Go a little further out this time. There we go. Get an idea of what our power level is. Unfortunately, it's never over 9,000. That's okay. Can't use flaps to slow down for this pass, so we got to turn around. Upside down. Stay a little higher. See how I'm hands off and the plane's basically going straight. That was a little too fast and a little too far away. So let's turn it around, do some more alpha. When you got the center of gravity as far back as I do with the stabilizer working to enhance the flight controls, just like the full scale F-22, you can take your hands off of it and it will fly basically the same thing you told it to last time. Same position, same heading. I'm hands off. See how it's barely going down or up? Two minutes. Okay, let's do that some more. Some more alpha passes. They're always fun. I find them to be very interesting to watch personally. Okay. Started getting pushed by the wind towards the trees. That kind of freaked me out just a little bit. I like this jet too much to crash it just yet. I'm gonna really go balls to the walls with it when I get my Mobius 1 decals in because I'm gonna have to buy all new parts because I want it to be fresh and new. Hands off. See how well that handles? So enough alpha passes. Maybe do some more later on. In the meantime, let's take her up. Let's get her to do some nice loops. See how she basically, uh, what's that term called? A culbit or a power loop? Wind's really picked up in the front here. Sorry if you guys can hear it. I turned the wind canceling back. Oh yeah, we're at 20 miles an hour right now. Let's use it for a high speed pass. A little bit of turbulence, a little bit of turbulence. Woo -hoo. That is some headwind. Let's use it to our advantage and do some alpha passes with it. Didn't get my alpha pass after all. That's okay. You guys can at least see how this stuff's done. If you want to be more adventurous than me, go for it. Let's take her up and make her do a tail slide. There we go. So you got to pull the elevator all the way back to keep it in that attitude as long as I could. Quick slow roll. Get those gear out and bring her in. Now that we're starting to run out of power. 22.2 volts. Yep, gear definitely down. in the danger zone now, which is good. It's about where I want to be when it comes time to land. Okay, we're gonna turn. Keep that airspeed up as we bank and pull. Level the wings out. Flaps. Drop the flaps. Plane should slow down significantly now. Spoilers out. Flaps up. Volts. And there you go. I'm gonna give me some water because some of those maneuvers made my uh, throat dry up a little bit. <laughs> All right, kill the camera or the uh, chest cam that is. Turn her around. Looks like I won't have to make the walk a shame. I only have 17 feet of taxiway to work with here, guys. It's uh, can be quite tricky at times. I'm looking forward to coming out here one of these days when it's too windy to fly, bring my hoe or weed whacker or something and just tear up that grass so I have more smooth surfaces for my jets to roll on. Maybe even look into repaving it myself. John here flying the F-22 again. I'm going to be turning the chest cam back on as usual. I'm going to be flying this with the center of gravity close to 170 millimeters if not slightly at it or beyond it. I find that this plane flies the best at that position. Anything Anything less than that or further forward just feels very sluggish in the air to me. 
check the CG real quick. Yeah, right about where it needs to be. Check the canopy, make sure it's not gonna pop off. I can't wait to rebuild this thing with uh, brand new parts. It's gonna be close to 60% of the cost of the ARF, but I'll be able to paint it in whatever scheme that I want. And that is gonna end up being the Mobius 1 scheme from Ace Combat 4. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. It's gonna look so cool. In the meantime, I'm flying this jet, full span flaps in the chest cam so you guys can see how to do some of the maneuvers that I've been doing with it. I know my buddy Air Guardian's been doing this kind of stuff. I actually did this before, but it just didn't come out the way I wanted it to. So I trashed about, I'd say 20 minutes of footage. Sometimes I do that and just don't like what I, what I came up with and just redo it. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get the chest cam running. So you guys can see what's going on. Minimum radius turn here. Pretty easy when you got the center of gravity set to where it needs to be. I barely have to move this plane's uh, sticks or controls at all to get it to do what I want it to do, which I love. And it's not tail heavy at all. It's actually just on the verge of like the rearward part of neutral stability. To show you what I'm talking about, let's bring her into a high alpha pass, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just take my hands off the sticks with a little bit of throttle. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, I got a little bit of a crosswind. That should help out things a little bit. Hands off the sticks. If it wasn't for a little bit of turbulence, the plane would just continue going straight with the nose pointed up. 23 volts. Do a cold bit. Or screw that. Get some more speed, then we'll do a cold bit. See how easily it does that loop? I'll have to uh, adjust my tracking when I zoom in so that you can see just how tight that loop is if the camera's not moving. You'll be able to see it even the clouds are are there. I'll do it with the clouds in front of me right here. It settles into it very much like the full scale. I could have been even better if I had timed it right, got it right in front of the trees like I'd want it to. It just, it flies just like the full scale. It's incredible how well it flies. When you got the tailor on set up, I mean, the, the jet does almost anything you tell it to do. Let's see if we can get a good inverted alpha pass. Hands off the sticks. See how well that handled? It just kept, it almost kept going straight up actually, which would have been interesting. A little bit dangerous because I probably would have lost the jet. We're gonna go a little further out and do that again. 21.1 volts. Those of you guys who are scale aficionados, which really love the way this jet's flying right now because this is scale and beyond scale, depending on how you want to fly it. Hands off the sticks. Inverted passes, alpha passes, they're not hard to do it in this jet at all. Let's do a knife edge pass with actual rudder. I'm gonna go a little bit further back here, see how the rudder's gonna handle. There we go. I wanna be able to correct for any kind of weirdness. Yeah, she immediately started to nose down like I was getting some uh, pitch coupling. Let's bring her up. <laughs> Definitely behaved a little weird when I gave it full rudder as I pulled back. See what happens if I give it full rudder as we go straight up. Pack 20 point, volts. Almost like a pop top, the way it flattened out at the top. Three minutes. .3 volts. Let's do that one more time, then we'll bring her into land. Hopefully it won't rip the uh, vertical stabilizers off. But if it does, hey, it's more content for the channel, am I right?
I don't even know what that was called, but it looked cool. Let's bring her in for one more maneuver. And we'll just make it flat spin, invert it all the way down. Wow, it's kind of right over my head. Okay, I need to bring the wheels out and get her down. I have an Avian ESC programmed, I believe, with the uh, voltage cutoff turned off, so I could probably fly it until the battery started uh, losing its voltage capacity, which actually happens very quick. Once you hit that point, you better get down fast because you won't have very much voltage left to work with. You'll go from like 21 volts down to 19, and then a couple seconds later, 18, 17. And you've pretty much got a damaged battery at that point. That's why you gotta land with a timer or your voltage telemetry, which is what I use. Got it into a high alpha pass, which is not what I want it. That is an inherent problem with making the center of gravity a little further back. You do end up into a situation where you can get alpha locked. The only way out of alpha lock like that is to throttle forward. And push down and hope you have enough airspeed to push the nose down because it actually wanted to stay like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn her around and I'm going to land with half flaps rather than full. Flaps 50. That should avoid alpha lock. Yeah, it's definitely behaving better now, but we'll save the flare until we get closer to pass this pavement. See the way it just floated in with half laps? I mean, it wasn't going much faster than somebody runs. So I'd say it came in at about 15 miles an hour at the end there. 15 to 20 at most. It's, it's a very, very floaty jet when you've got it set up with the right center of gravity. It also makes it kind of interesting to fly sometimes. Anyway guys, this has been John at Sin RC. I will see you next time. Cheers.